Okay, guys, now that we have finished taking a look at vectors and various vector operations that we're going to find quite valuable in our journey to create 3D applications. Oh, yes. Let us go ahead and do a little programming. It's, it's, we haven't done any yet, and we no, need we to. So what we're Except do, in the intro. Yeah, well, yeah, that doesn't really count. Right. What we need to do is create a very simple vector class that will handle, well, basically all of the vector operations that we're going to need. That's right. Addition, subtraction, multiplying by scalar, dot product, cross product. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I said everything, didn't <laughs> I? You pretty much did. Um, of course, this is going to involve some very simplistic coding. Mm -hmm. So those of you that are already skilled at stuff like this may, well, hit the fast forward button real quickly. Yeah, um, just skip to the end. And, and for those of you that may have had uh, issues with overloading operators, you're going to be very comfortable with doing that by the time you get to the end of this video. Oh, yes. Because, you know, C++ doesn't know how to add two vectors together. Nope. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even know what a vector is. So, so we have to tell it. We get to do all that. It's, this is going to be a very short lesson, very straightforward, but we do need to do it. So here we are on camera doing it. So let's, let's start out with a new project. Let's go to File, New Project. Um, create a console project, and we'll just call this Vectors. Do you want to call it Vectors? Yes, I do. You do? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, just give it a second. All right, go to Application Settings. We'll create empty an empty project. project. All right, so let's create a simple um, CPP file just to just, just so for we can testing. testing. Yeah, that's it. So let's create our course, CPP. The only thing we're really interested here is just this header file that we're yeah. gonna set up so that we can easily add to our real projects in the future. And we'll just kind of enclose everything, the implementation as well, inside of this header file. So we just need to include one header file. Right. Um, and of course we have our if not defined. If not defined. Vector three underscore h. Then we're going to go ahead and define vector three underscore h, and and, and if end it. yeah. So let's create our class. We'll go ahead and call this class vector three, and let's put on our semicolon. Yeah, I was about to say, don't forget the <laughs> terminator. <laughs> and we're only going to need three member variables for our vector class. It's going to be X, Y, and Z. And notice these are being set out in the public. Yeah, this is really important because, I mean, we could create accessory functions set X, set Y, set Z. And some, there are some people that do that. Yeah, but, but in this particular case, I mean, you, you, re you really would like to be able to get straight access to for, X, Y, and Z. Exactly. So if you have, like, a, a velocity, you can simply go velocity to that X plus exactly. equal to or something like that. Exactly. And if you had accessory functions, you add a whole lot of unnecessary overhead. Right. Um, so... The first thing we need is our constructor, so vector3, and we'll create our float x. So we're going to need three parameters. Just initialize these guys to zero. Yeah, we'll initialize it to zero. So if you don't pass it any parameters, it'll just simply... You're still good to go. Yeah. And if you do pass it parameters, let's go ahead and throw some code in here, but we'll set x equals x. Y equals y, and z equals z. Perfect. So with that, let's go ahead and start doing some operator overloading. We'll start out with our addition operator. Now, remember, for mm -hmm. those of you that may have any type of problems with operator overloading, we've touched on it, and I think it was C++ VTM number three. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is this. I mean, if we wanted to say, let's say we had vector A and vector B, right. and we wanted to add these two together. We want to be able to say A plus, plus B, B right. instead of saying A dot add vector and then pass it a vector, which is just <laughs> yeah. not fun. Yeah, this would make a lot more sense. So we're going to have to overload... A like, few vectors. Yeah, a few uh, operators. Uh, a few operators. That's a right. A few vectors. <laughs> uh, so let's create a vector 3 and the operator plus, and of course, if we want minus, minus, multiply, just exactly. multiply. Exactly. So, so basically, we're going to do like plus, plus equals, right. minus, minus equals, Et and so on and so forth. Right. So we have our constant vector 3, and then we'll pass it our vec. So we'll use, we'll add this with our vec. So we'll have, um, let's see, return a new vector. Because we're not modifying ourselves when we use a simple operator like plus. We return the addition of these two vectors in a new vector. So we have our vec.x. Hence the return value. Exactly. The uh, vec.x, vec.y, plus y, and vec.z, plus z. Simple as that. So let's go ahead and throw in a, uh, a plus, plus equals. equals. Yeah, so we'll throw in a plus equals right here. Which will look just slightly different. Very slightly different. All we, all we need to do is actually set ourselves. So we'll do a return star this equals and then this plus vec. 
which is actually going to make use of the other function. Yes, well. it's actually going to call this. That's right. As a matter of fact, just give them a little example right there of, of yeah. where, with the plus equals, just in case anyone may be a little rusty. Right. With Simply we could say like vector 3 A and B, and if we wanted to add them together, we could say A plus equals B. Exactly. So A is, is, what we're going to do is we're going to take the value of whatever's currently in A, right. add, a add B to it, and then put it back in A. Exactly. Which because of that, we've got the, the plus operator down here mm -hmm. between the two vectors, which means we're obviously going to have to call this one down here Exactly. As well. And we could redefine it and simply set it ourselves, but this allows us to localize where our addition operator is set. Precisely. Um, and just for good measure, I'm going to wrap this entire thing in parentheses. It's sometimes standard to do that, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Cool. And we'll go ahead and call yeah. out our little example. Why? I like it. I know you do, but it's got to go. <laughs> um, and then let's do our subtraction operator. So let's grab this whole lot and just kind of change things around a little bit and switch these to minus, and this is going to have to switch around a little bit, so it's x minus vec dot x. Exactly. Otherwise, you're going to find all of your values needed. Opposite. Yeah. I've actually accidentally done that before. It's not fun. It's kind of funny to it watch, is. though. <laughs> For you, maybe. <laughs> okay. And we'll change this to operator minus. And with that, what else do we got? We'll go ahead and do a minus equals. Um, we already got our minus equals. Oh, do we really? Oh, oh man. That's what I get for not looking up at the screen. <laughs> Beat you to it. Yes, you did. Wow, um, fast. So let's do our so uh, multiplication, multiplication by yeah. a uh, scalar. So let me go ahead and copy this again. And we'll do a multiply equal as well. So let me just do a multiply equal. Ah, that's what it, a second ago you copied both lines. I just didn't see. <laughs> now all you had to do is just change the one operator. Ah, I see what you're doing now. Yeah, now you're on to me. <laughs> So we have our multiply by a constant, and for this, all we need to do is simply say x multiplied by num, y multiplied by num, exactly, and z multiplied by num. And there we have our multiplication by a scalar. Okay. So, so with a little that, division, maybe? A little division. And again, uh, multiplication and division are really the same thing, but this allows us to do things like, say... Well, if you want to scale it, like, by half. I mean, right. you could say divide by two as opposed, opposed to multiply by 0.5. 0.5, yeah. right. Um, it's, one works for... E one Either way, you have something... The bottom line is, look, we're setting up a header file that's going to handle everything you'd like to do with vectors. Exactly. Okay? Oh, and right here, I uh, accidentally... Mul for multiply and equal, change no. that over to no. Yeah. And for this, divide by num, and then simply divide. So lots of copying, pasting, and replacing. Or you could just type it all out if that makes you happy. If it does. It doesn't make me happy, though. Yeah. Okay, so at this so point, uh, we also have one other. What if we want to invert the direction of our vector? In other words, negate it. Uh, that's very easy to do. We can simply, well, negate it with another operator. But this time, the only difference really is that it's going to be a unary operator. So... But it's defined in the exact same way. So vector 3, and then we'll simply say operator minus. And we don't have any parameters because, again, it's a unary operator. And then we simply return a vector 3. And we negate that has everything. Negative, negative x, negative y, negative z. So we just invert the direction of our vector. Right. So with that, let's go ahead and start All implementing right, so now our... now we can start taking a look at, like, cross product, dot product. Yeah, let's go ahead and do our dot product. Um, dot product's actually not going to be an operator overload, because there really right. isn't a, a good operator that allows us to properly signify dot. Right, no, this is just going to be a function. Yeah, so we're just going to return a float, and it's going to be called dot with capital D, and vector 3, vec, and let's return... As we mentioned before, simply x times vec dot x plus plus y times vec dot y plus. If I can if he type can it out, get it in there. There we go. Slowly but surely. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was like, hmm, did I do something wrong again? Okay, so and then we have our uh, cross product. Okay. So and again, this is going to be an operator overload. So all we're going to do, and again, we're returning a actual vector in this, and we'll utilize the multiplication operator. And pass it a constant vector 3 vec. And return our vector 3 with y times vec dot y minus z. Oh, well, no, no, no. y times vec dot z. Getting carried away here. Minus z times vec dot y, comma. And then as we showed in the previous video, it's negative x times vec dot z minus z times vec dot x. x. But we can simplify that. Yeah, we can easily simplify this by simply bringing in the negative sign. So that would be z times vec dot x minus exactly. x times vec dot z. 
But it's good just being able to see it both ways so that you right. can figure out what's going on. Because at first that might be confusing. You think it's opposite. Right. And let's see. Finally, we have our x times vec dot y minus, minus y times vec dot x. There you go. And that's going to be our main operators. Now, there is um, a few extra things I do want to add, and that's um, a function to return the length of our vector, a okay. uh, function to normalize ourselves, and finally, the distance, maybe? and finally the distance, yeah, between two separate vectors. So the first one is going to be a function called length, which returns a float and simply says the length of our vector. And, of course, no parameters since we're just getting the length of our cells. And return the square root of x times x plus y times y, y squared, plus z squared. Diagram's theorem again. Yep. A squared plus b squared plus c squared. But now that we see a square root in there, in the back of your mind, just keep uh, make a little mental note that we're going to have to include math.h now. I'm going to include it right now, Ooh. just for you. <laughs> no, I, let me just h. scratch that off my mental note list. <laughs> I didn't want to have to overload your brain. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, well, that wouldn't have taken much more. <laughs> Uh, vector 3, let's create a normalize function. So we'll normalize ourselves and then return a copy of ourselves so that we can string operations together. Yeah, so, so let's first thing get is the just, length. Yeah, find the length. By simply calling the function we just created. And then divide each component by that. So x oh, by length. length, size. Where did that come from? Uh, divide by length, z, divide equal length. And then we'll simply return this. And there you have it. Cool. And finally, we have our distance function, which, of course, is also going to return a scalar. And it requires one parameter, and that's going to be our vector 3 vec. And finally, implementation. First, we're going to have to find the distance between each individual component. So we'll simply do... Uh, so just float like... Yeah, dis x. Dis x equals vec dot x minus x. Right. Yeah. And you might see other ways to do this. Actually, there's a really other... You could create two individual vectors, subtract them, and find the length of it mm -hmm. if you wanted to. But this is a little bit faster since we're not actually creating a new two new vectors. Exactly. And then we simply do exactly what we did here. Return the square root. Um, Pythagorean's theorem again. So distance x times distance x plus distance y times distance y plus distance z times distance z. I heard that sigh. Yes. Well, there's so a lot of typing. typing. I know, I know. Um, and finally, there's two other operators. We got pretty much everything we need, but if we want to compare... Yeah, um, see if they're equal to See if they're equal, yeah. Or not equal, yeah. Um, so that can be really useful. So let's go ahead and just... I want to copy one of these so I don't have to do too much typing. So we were going to return a bool saying, you know, whether it's true or false, whether or not they're equal. So let's create whether or not they're equal... Um, pass it a vector as well, so vector 3, vec. And this is really simple. All we need to do is compare each of our uh, components. So return vec dot x equals equals x, x. And, and so they all have to be the same, equals equals y, and vec dot z equals equals z. Right. And that's it. And we'll do a not equal as well. And we'll just let not equal use the equal equal. Right, by simply doing... Not vec equals equals this. Exactly. So I'll return true if this is false. Right. Beautiful. And I think that's everything. So let's go ahead and go over to our main.cpp. Make a quick little app that's just going to test this out. Yeah. But let's go ahead and start out with something that's going to allow us to print out. Yeah. Actually, let's cre vectors. create a simple utility function that allows us to print the vectors that's out. Good. So we'll call it print vector um, or something. Print vector. And we don't have a return type. We also don't want to forget to include vector3.h. That's a good thing to remember. Let me go ahead and put that in there. <laughs> .NET smart, but it's not that smart. <laughs> um, so let's simply see out our results just so we can test it out. And it's always good once you create some sort of math utility well, like for this sure. to do some quick tests on, you know, in Mathematica or some other program or do it on paper and then go ahead and test it out in your own application to make sure that everything does add up properly. And we're going to do this by writing a quick program. That's going to test out some of the things we've gone over in the last few yep. lessons. Um, so if you have notes handy or something, you can go ahead and check our results so with some your notes. some simple addition here. So vector 3, 1, comma 2, two three. comma 3. Added one. to vector 3. Do 7, 2, and 5. Okay. Is that what we had before? Mm -hmm. Sure was. All right. And then 
let's go ahead and test this out, make sure everything compiles properly. Because there might be a typo here and there. And there oh. might not be. Oh. Oh. Wow. Flawless victory. Yes. And we'll compile again just for good measure. And, and 848. And it looks good. Because you guys remember, 7 plus 1, that's 8. 7 two plus 1, plus 2 plus 2 is 4, is four five 3, three plus 8. 5, yeah. Okay, right. so subtraction, 3, 4, and 5. 3, 4, and 5. And 2, 9, and 3. 2, whoa, <laughs> 9, So that should be three. 1, uh, negative, negative 5, five and, and 2. 1, negative 5, and whoa. 2. Whoa, that looks so good. Sweet. All right, so let's do a multiplication by a scalar. So I think we multiplied it with 5. Yeah. So we'll do like 1, 2, 3, and then times 5. Should be 5, 10, and 15. Yeah. Wow, your math skills are elite. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 5, 10, and 15. Let me go ahead and type out the rest so I don't have to. And Keep let's this. check our dot product real quick. Um, so we have 1, one 2, and three. Th whoa. One, 2, and 3 dot. dotted with another vector. 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1. This should give us 10 if I remember correctly. And finally, let's do another print vector to check our cross product. And we'll just do uh, two. And of course, um, real quick, we're not testing um, plus equal, minus equal, multiplied equal, simply because those call the ones we've just tested. Right. Uh, and that's why we do that, simply so that we don't have to test multiple ones. And that could be really difficult. You want to make sure you test it. Uh, at the very early stages here, because once you have a really massive application, you start to find really bizarre errors, and you wonder what's going on. It's almost impossible to find at that point because right. you almost never go back to your original classes. So let's go ahead and test this out and see if this is right. And as I remembered, our ten. dot product with one, two, and three, and three and two, one is ten. That's right. And the cross product between one, two, and three, and four, five, and six is negative three, six, and negative three. Beautiful. So it seems like everything is working properly. Again, keep in mind the important thing that we've just done here is we've more or less created a module that we can simply add into our own applications mm -hmm. so that our own programs suddenly recognize what a vector is. Not right. only that, but we have all sorts of operators at our fingertips now that understand what they need to do when you try to add vectors together, subtract them, multiply them, etc. Right, and that makes life just a whole lot easier. For sure. We'll be using this again later when we get into the particle engine and the OBJ loader. Right. So with that, that's going to wrap up this very important video. Thanks a lot, everyone.